Kathy. <laughs> if there's anyone here, hello, hello, hello. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's been forever since I've been on with you guys. Uh, it's just been some crazy, hectic few months here. Um, we just came back from our vacation where we went to Disney World <laughs> right when the hurricane was coming through. But Disney World was great. Perfect weather. It was just beautiful. We had a great time. Um, but I just have not been creating a whole lot lately. And um, I've been just a little bit in a funk. So um, I've created a couple things lately. And it's getting me out of my funk. Having a good visit with my amazing friend Sandy McTeer. Helped a lot. Uh, she just is a great boost to my spirit. So I enjoyed visiting with her and uh, talking to her and uh, I've been getting ready for Palooza. I'm going to be leaving Saturday for that. So my studio is cleaned out. It was packed full of stuff. The studio and our bedroom was packed full of stuff and it's all downstairs now waiting to load into my car on Friday. So I am excited about heading to that convention. It's going to be great. It's always a great time there. Um, I really enjoy it, and I can't wait to see everybody. It's going to be so much fun. My husband is going with me this year. Um, he's kind of going to do his thing, but just be around for help if needed, and uh, it's going to be great. So uh, I'm looking forward to it a lot. So I've got quite a few people in both my classes. I uh, still have some spots left, but... I do want to show you guys, I don't know how many of you that watch me here on YouTube will actually be attending Palooza, but um, one of the designs I'm doing is on a pillow cover, and I'm doing it in these beautiful teal colors, painting with fabric paint, which I love, but there's many um, deco art paints that work well on fabric, um, but I will be teaching with the fabric paints, but the design, I painted it up here the other day. And just traditional Christmas colors <clears throat> and um, just to show you that even the way that I teach it doesn't have to be the colors that you use uh, if you want to paint it again or paint it as a gift for somebody else so lots and lots of fun and I love the fabric paint the fact that it has glitter paint I don't know if you can see the bling 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 on there and then the metallic paints I'm really getting a glare from my lights here but the bulbs are metallic paints, and um, the candle is glitter, and the center of the flowers are glitter. So much fun. It's the softest paint, you guys. The softest paint. I think that's why they call it so soft. So soft fabric paint. But <clears throat> I just wanted to pop in a few minutes early and show you that. And um, I'm going to flip over to my Facebook feed because I did get it to work both on Facebook and YouTube this time. So that was great. I'm going to show you a couple of things while we wait for people before we get started. Um, if you do want a free line drawing for this, just email me at lanalam at gmail.com and say, I would like the crow in the moonlight line drawing, and uh, I will be happy to send it to you. It's um, got a list of the paints that I use, and I'm going to be using uh, Traditions paints, but I also did a conversion for Americana and the brushes that I use, the line drawing and full color photo. So um, it's a pretty easy one. Uh, I think if you decide to paint it, you can really have fun with it and play around with the colors that you put within the bird or don't put any colors in it at all. I don't know. You might not want any colors in it. So <clears throat> we uh, are going to have fun with it. So I thought for me, coming back to live, and I hope you all can hear me because uh, I have had so much computer issues over the last month and a half and camera issues. And the camera that I'll be using today actually to uh, point down here is the one that I usually use for my palette. So I don't have a palette cam because I had to move it over and use uh, for our main main screen for painting today. So I'm going to put myself a little in the corner and um, show you some things real quick while we see if anybody else wants to pop in and join and maybe paint along <clears throat> or just watch me paint and <laughs> maybe paint it later. I don't know. Uh, but um, I'm hoping that y'all can hear me. So if you can hear me, let me know. 
All right, so this thing right here, I'm going to show you this one first real quick because this is a sleigh ornament that I have. And um, my husband is no longer going to be cutting wood for me because uh, we still haven't found a house, but we hope to move. And we already know that wherever we go, it won't have as big a shop as what he has now. So we decided to go ahead and cut out wood. Um, what I take to Palooza will be all that I have. So if you're coming to Palooza and you want some wood surface or anything from me, everything in my booth will be 20% off this year. Trying to thin out a little bit. So thank you, Anne. Anna. I appreciate that, letting me know that you can hear me. Um, so let's see. Oh, hello, everyone on Facebook. I'm so happy that you're getting this because I never know. <laughs> I never know. Hi, Anne. Thank you. I just sent you an email, so thank you so much for uh, being here with me today. So anyway, this surface is a sleigh ornament surface. Uh, it's a beautiful size. Um, I just love it. But this particular design was in the October issue of Painting World magazine. So if you get that magazine, uh, this was in there. If you don't get it, you should subscribe or go out to your uh, local craft store and see if they carry the magazine. I think I saw it at Walmart here a while back, and I think Barnes & Noble still carries it. Um, I think Michaels and Hobby Lobby are supposed to carry it, but I never look uh, for those things when I'm there. But um, yeah, this was a fun one, and I love this uh, surface. And I did, you can see a little bit of the metallic. I put metallic paint on there and really blinged it up. But it's so hard in the photographs when I post photos for you to really see, you know, how something looks or how big it might be. So you can see how big it is right here. It's it's just a wonderful, wonderful size for an ornament. So I'm just giving some more people a chance to pop in here. Um, on November 29th, I'm going to be doing a live class on Facebook. Um, again, it's a free one. Uh, we're going to be painting some peppermint up. So I'm going to uh, show you some different ways that you can paint it. And here I even did it on the sleigh. Um, I love how this one turned out. On the other side, I did it with all of the uh, 2022 Deco Art New Colors. Um, so this is all the new colors for 2022 in this on this side. And then this side, I just did all peppermint. But I just love how this turned out. So on um, November 29th at 6 p.m. Central in the Facebook group, Creative Innovations in Painting, I'll be teaching you how to paint peppermint a few different ways. And uh, it's going to be fun. So you can paint them green, white, white and red. Uh, I have different colors of red on here. It's not the same color of red I used everywhere. And some of them have some green on it. I might use a little bit lighter, brighter green. Um, when I do some more of these because I think I'll be doing peppermint ornaments for Christmas this year because I do uh, hand paint ornaments for family. But this is what we're doing today, this lovely crow. And this camera doesn't, I don't think it shows the colors as well as my other one did, but um, if I get it up close enough, you can see those pretty colors in that crow. This this really, really super easy, easy project. So as you can see, I've painted my surface black to begin with. Okay, because we're not using very many colors. I'll only go over the colors we're using. We're using black and white. Now I'm using traditions paints, but the line drawing has the conversion for Americana. I mean black and white is black and white. <laughs> it doesn't matter what color, what brand of paint you're using. These are all deco art brand paints though, but and then I'm going to use dioxane purple. So you can use dioxane purple in the regular uh, Americana paints. Medium green. Um, you could do like a leaf green or a festive green. I think those greens would be pretty. And then this is aquamarine. Uh, I can't remember what color I put on for that one. I think it was a peacock teal or a color close to that. Um, but you could use um, some kind of burgundy in it. Um, you know, you can be as creative as you want to be. You could put some oranges in it. I mean, it is kind of a Halloween themed type painting. So, uh, and we're using very, very small amounts of these colors. So it's just tiny, tiny little amounts. So, um, Kathy says the video has frozen. Oh, she had to go out and come back in. So yeah, let me know if, if it freezes for you. I, I am telling you, I, I really didn't know if I'd make it today. 
because so much trouble with my computer and my cameras and everything. And then I had a gentleman who was the son of our mechanic. We had been to our mechanic and uh, he said, oh, he, worked, he he knows all about computers. So I called him and he helped me. He, he just... <laughs> He just fixed it right up, and so I am so thankful for him. He's getting a special cake for me. <laughs> I'm going to get it made and take it over to his dad and, and say, please give this to your son. So, yeah, I appreciate people when they, they help out like that and don't expect anything in return. So um, he was quite the blessing for me. So I have my computer running. You guys can hear me because at one point I had no sound. <laughs> my video is okay, mostly because I switched out my camera, so I have... A corrupt cable somewhere I think um, so if you're ready we're gonna get started on our lovely little crow here so the first thing that I did for our moon um, you don't really have to be too exact about the shape of your moon because you're just seeing small portion of it behind the crow so I didn't really worry too much about if it was correct proportionally <laughs> so this is what I did um, show you my fancy little techniques I got here. I put, let me find my white chalk pencil. I just took a foam plate and I just laid it on here and left a little room on this side, a little corner piece up there. I'm going to scoot it up so it kind of goes off. I want to make sure it goes off of the edge at the top and the bottom here. So, and we're not painting this whole circle in. We're just painting behind the crow. We're going to put our crow, the outline of our crow on here in just a second. So then just take your pencil, if you've got your moon, kind of about where you want it to be. I'm going to move it down and over a little bit. So I can have about as much room as I have on this one. I don't want to have to measure. I'm just going to, I'm just going to eyeball it. Eyeball it. That, that's, that's a fun way to paint right there. So I'm going to go down this side and across that corner. And there's our moon shape. So easy. Now, let me find my line drawing for my crow. I'm not really sure what I did with it. All right. So the line drawing for the crow uh, looks like this in the little packet thing that I email you if you want it for free. So it's got a large crow here. If you want to put it on a much larger piece, you can. But I just wanted it on a small piece. So I only want so much of the crow like right to there so what I'm going to do is you don't have to worry about lining up your moon lines but you can if you want to this moon line obviously is not the same over here you can see it's way up here so I would I would totally ignore the moon line you know it's just kind of there for a reference don't uh don't take it as written in stone because that, that line drawing does not, for that moon, it's just, you know, we're going to be putting a moon around it. <laughs> it's just basically telling you we're going to be putting a moon around it. So I'm going to uh, put my crow on. I think right about there seems good. Your crow, you put however much of him you want on there, but you can see I've cut him off pretty good. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to trace the outline here and get the shape. And I am going to go ahead and put the eye on, the eye, the circle for the eye. That's going to be reference for me when I come back to put my line drawing back on later so we make sure that we get um, everything put back on. But you'll see that as I go. Okay, so just slide your white tracing paper underneath. Make sure I don't have any questions here and we're going to put this on just the just the outside shape here I'll go over the brushes that I used here in a second okay so you see we just have the shape of the crow and we will be putting more on there later So as you can see, I don't have a palette cam, like I said, <laughs> so I will um, be trying to put my palette in where you can see it. Oh, I forgot to put my eye on. After I told you I was going to put my eye on, I forgot to put my eye on. 
I just want that for reference for um, when I put the lines back on later for you know because we'll get some of that moon color into our bird that we'll have to cover back up with black. So if you have a circle stencil, you can use a circle stencil to draw that eye in. So we've got, that's just places. I'm not worrying about that eye right now. That's all going to be later stuff that we're going to be doing. Okay, let me go over the brushes that I used. I only used three brushes on this whole project. Um, I used a 12 filbert. But um, now this is, is one of my good brushes. I think I'll switch over to a one that's a little bit older. Um, this uh, is going to be, we're going to be like scrubbing in the moon. So it won't be, um, you know, smooth painting. We won't be doing smooth painting with the moon. We're going to be doing some scrubbing and mixing and all that stuff right there on it. So I used, this one is a size 12, but this brand is a half inch. So. I used a zero round brush. You could use a one round. And then I used a three eighths inch angle. Thank you, Anna. I hope you'll watch it later and I uh, hope you get to paint one. This is a pretty, pretty fun project. Okay, so, and then this is a three eighths inch angle. So those are the only three brushes that I used. So uh, I do recommend if you're painting, especially on a canvas, if you're working on a canvas, to be sure and paint the... Um, the moon with a, a little bit older brush because we're going to be doing some scrubbing. It doesn't have to be a stiff brush, it, just a regular brush, um, just so you don't damage damage your brush any. So this particular camera doesn't wide angle out as, as well as the other one. So yeah, this one just painted on my mat board. It's on the back of my frog. <laughs> So I like to paint on both sides. You never know what you're going to do. I've already got this side prepped white for something else. So, all righty, let's grab some paint. I'm going to move my palette over here. So hopefully you can see it. Because I'm not using very many colors of paint. So you won't need to be using up a lot of area in the palette. All right, let's get started. So I'm dampening my filbert brush that I'm going to be using and some white and some black out. I like the Traditions paints because it's a little more pigmented. So I'll put some white in there. I may have to add some more. So we'll start with that. And a little bit of black. Yeah, I better put some more white out. I don't think that's going to be enough. These spots on here are on my palette underneath. I have a glad press and seal on top of my palette here. Um, but the palette itself is stained. So, all right, let's get started on the moon. So, I'm going to load my brush with some white. We're going to just start with some white here. And just wherever you want to start on your um, moon, we're just going to, I'm using the flat edge. I think I have a little bit too much moisture in my brush. So I'm going to take that. I really don't want my paint to be super wet. That's pretty wet there, and uh, but it'll dry quickly because I really want this more. I want to reach for the opposite remote. I really want this kind of, see how that is making some texture. That's really going to help our moon. Go right up into your crow because we don't want to see any lines and we're not painting the whole thing. And I'm going to take some of this white and move it around because it's, it's a little damp there. Wide angle back out. I just want, just want you to see that, that spot close up. So I'm really scrubbing with the flat edge of my brush. Okay. And this area over here is just a little wet. I have way too much water in my brush. So when you get your brush damp to start with, make sure you remove the excess moisture out of your brush. So squeeze it on the paper towel. Make sure you don't have any of that in there. And we're just going to scrub this in. Of 
that's a lot of white in this area, but we'll be breaking it up. So I'm going to load some more white and a little tiny bit of black, or maybe a lot of black, just a little bit. Make a light, light gray. Remove the excess paint onto my, yeah, we can't see that. It's going to have to be darker. Okay, we, we want to make sure we see at least three values here, a white, a dark gray, and black. So we'll come back in with our black soon. I might just take my um, my baby wipe and wipe some of that off over here because it's just, it's way too solid. I don't want it to be that, quite that solid. I can still see my moon line, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm going in with some darker gray, just kind of scrubbing it and blending it. All right, I'm going to get it just black now. I'm going to put some black. I'm going to lay it in in a couple places. Wipe my brush off and then come in here and just scrub it and blend it. And I like to move all around my moon. I like to, to do, try and do wet on wet. If I get out of my moon shape, it's not a big deal. I can come back in with my white and, or my black and, and fix the background. So I still have some of that uh, black in my brush. And I just picked up some white. Trying to clean up that edge there, which looks a little rough. I think I'll get as much of that black out as I can. I'm going to try and not have to rinse my brush, but I think I may have to. This really is a super easy way to create a moon. Just working wet into wet. Grab a little bit of black that in. Since you've already got black in the background, you can just start creating a little bit of texture on here and then leave some of that black showing through. And we'll brighten up the edge of the moon with a little bit of white when we get it where we want it to be. some of that paint off so I can make it the less paint you have on your brush I have to tell you the better um, it's going to make the the moon look more real so we're going to go all the way around the crow and then we're going to start kind of placing where we want to have um, a little bit brighter colors or a little bit darker color. So I want a little bit more white color over here on this side. So I had a tiny bit on my brush. Now I'm just scrubbing it out. And this is why I didn't want you to use a stiff brush for this because um, this creates a better texture than using a stiff brush. Uh, I just think a stiff brush is not going to work well for creating this moon effect that you want to create back here. All right, a little bit of black in here. And I think I am going to have to wash this brush and get the moisture out of it because I really need to start adding some brighter white in here. I want a little bit more black right through here. Right through here. I'm going to have to dry that because that's still wet from that initial paint I put on when I had way, way too much moisture in my brush. Because I don't want to be doing solid painting here. I'm just scrubbing in some texture. That's all we're doing. Go 
rub that texture in. So I'm going to squeeze my brush and make sure that it doesn't have moisture in it. And I'm going to load some white on my brush. Work it into that almost completely dry brush because this is similar to dry brushing here. Ah, there we go. We're getting that nice light color. That's what we want to see. That nice light. Go around your crow. Go ahead and get on the crow because that's going to make all the difference. Now, I don't know how well you can tell right there. You see, I didn't go all the way down to the black and that left that texture right there. That is the part that I really, really like on this. So I'm picking up a little white, then I'm offloading it onto my paper towel because I want, I just want a little bit of paint on my brush. So work it in, wipe it off. And this area over here, because I had a wet brush to begin with, will probably take a little bit more effort to get it looking more moonish, but it will get there. I think it's so fun to create a moon like this. Lots and lots of fun. And this moon will fall back into the background you know, when we're done. So wipe a little bit of that off. Do some cleaning up around this moon. So you can see how we're getting some texture in there. It's looking really good. A little bit of black on my brush. Wipe it off because I want a few areas that are a little bit darker. wash my brush because I don't want that dark color to remain in my brush and get all the moisture out so squeeze 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 don't pull on the bristles just squeeze them that's all you need to do and then we're going to add a little bit more of some lighter stuff on top So much fun. So easy to do. This edge of the moon over here is like the brightest edge. Okay, just a wiggle and a scrub and a scrub and a wiggle and creating a super cool moon. I'm going to clean up the edge here a little bit with some white first off and then I'll go into the background and do the black. Well I'll do the black after we paint the bird in because we'll have the black out for that. So the edge of it will be a little bit brighter. If you need to bring your plate back in to get that circle back where you want it to be, you can do that. I will just be eyeballing it. Okay, so the moon's as easy as that. It's, it's just a little scrubbing, creating some values in the background. Super, super easy. Super easy. This whole painting is super easy, I think. Okay, I'm going to take my angle brush. And, well, let's get our line drawing back out. Just 
shouldn't take long for that to dry because we're just scrubbing on thin layers of paint. Okay, I'm going to line up where I can tell some lines are. Tape that down. I'm going to have to use gray graphite this time, I think. I got a piece that's not completely worn out. Mostly because my moon out there is a lighter color. I'm not sure my white will show up. But we want to get the shape back in of the beak. Working out. The shape of our bird, and then we can switch out to our white. So you will need both gray and white probably for this project. Just some small scrap pieces. That's all you're going to need. Those lines aren't really necessary right there. Okay, so we can see where our bird is, our crow, a raven, whatever you want to call him. So I'm just going to go in with my angle brush here and paint these areas in black. I want to start with them black, even though we're going to be adding some white in here. I want to start with everything being black. here. And then I'll go out and clean up the edge of my moon. It's just a rough little covering up. You know, you don't have to you don't have to worry about covering all that that you got on it up, but we want to cover up, you know, a good portion of it. I mean, we are going to be coming back in and adding the colors back onto the bird, but we're just going to be doing it in a different way. So, okay. So I'm going to clean up the edge of my moon here while my crow is drying. I'm just using this angle brush. Like I said, I only use three brushes. You use whatever brushes that you want. These are only recommendations. So you can kind of leave some of this outside of the moon for a little glow around it if you want. That would look really cool. I think I kind of lost some shape here. I should have put my plate back on there, you think? Y'all think? Because it doesn't look like it's very straight. Let's eyeball it here. There's the edge up there. There's the edge. Just get the part of the plate that's not bent up. That might work. That helped. All right. Let's paint a bird. Okay, so um, I'm going to be using pretty much this brush the whole time till I get down to some detail in the eye and maybe a few other details here or there. But I really just used this whole brush and I used just the, the chisel edge of it and just started creating some. Um, I started with a little bit of a light gray color. I'm just going to mix as I go. And just I just began pulling little strokes here. Let me see if I can. I don't know if I lift this up. If it's going to make it too close to you or not. Or at an awkward angle. You let me know. So 
And don't worry if you get too much on here because um, when we come back with our black, we can we can do whatever we need with our black and clean up stuff and throw this a little bit right to there. And then it comes. I'm gonna wipe some of this off. I've got a lot on my brush because I just want to start with a little bit lighter layer. And then down to here, we're going to have some little strokes. You let me know if I need to zoom in, Lee. Okay, so up here. Across the top. We're going to put some across here. And then they will start coming down this way and then across the back. Around the eye will remain black, but if we get too close to it, like I just got a little too close right there, we'll clean it up with black. That's the good thing about this one. Our black is going to help us clean up anything that we don't like. Or if we left, you know, if we didn't leave a dark enough area, then we can put that in. Now around the eye, I'm just going to be up on the tip. Let me wipe a little of that off. That was a lot of paint. And just kind of go around the eye. You can already see I'm going to have to add some black back in right there. We're just kind of following the shape there a little bit. I'm a little bit flatter on my brush there, so that's a little bit bolder stroke, but we'll clean that up and take it down so don't don't stress out at any point if you put down like some really bold strokes because black is your friend here and that will take it all out so I'm just going to come all the way back all this back here and down through here we're eventually going to have really dark almost black but we'll be able to see a little bit of this coming through it so that will be fun and interesting Okay, so let's see, down to here, we're going to put a little bit going this way. It's really dark through here, so we'll just start with a few little something something in there. <laughs> Doesn't really have to look like anything. Not yet. We're just putting some, this is all kind of under underlaying stuff in. So, because that one's really, really bright, and I'm, I'm definitely going to have to thin that one down. Okay, let's do a little bit more on our mouth here. Here, it has a little bit of some stroke, and just a tiny drop of water. I got plenty of paint on my brush. It was just starting to dry out a little bit. So we're just going to form that a little bit. There's a little bit of lightness in here. Uh, Judy, thank you so much. Hi, Jan. I appreciate that so much. You have no idea how encouraging that is for me to hear those words. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's put a few more up here. And we need to create, start creating a little bit of a line along our, and this is where if you want to grab the round brush and do it, but, you know, this brush works just fine for me. So if you can learn to manipulate one brush to make it work for almost everything that you want to do, that makes it more incredibly fun. <laughs> Less stressful, I think. All right, a little bit more paint on my brush. Okay, one thing that I do want to add down here in the black of my bird, um, I want some, um, I'm going to be up on the tip of this um, filbert brush, and I just want to put some like loose feathery stuff coming in down here, um, make it not look so um, straight. I don't, I don't want that straight line that, that was coming off the front of the bird there. Uh, you could do the same thing back here if you wanted to put a few stray little. I wouldn't do too much back there, but you can put a few. 
So you see how that creates a little bit more interest in there. And let me dry that so I can come down with my light color here. Okay, I think I'm going to flip this. Well, actually, I think I'll do the unused ones first. We're going to just go ahead and put some, um, some strokes. Whew, too much paint on my brush. Put some strokes down through here. And this is, this is like dry brushing right through here. It's because um, I don't have a ton of paint on my brush, and it's not leaving a lot on the surface here. So just putting some strokes in here. You could do a few of these could be a little bit bolder. We're gonna put some fatter ones up here in just a minute. I'm gonna show you how to make an easy way to make some uh, little feather looks. And I'm gonna bring some down here, even though I'm gonna wash over with black down here. These will just barely, barely shine through. Um, as you can see down here, you can just barely see them coming through. So I think that is fun. Okay, see how he's coming together? He's looking good. All right, to get a little bit more of that gray mix on my brush, let me grab a little drop of water and work that in. Tap, tap, tap on my brush because I still want on my paper towel because I still want to be doing some dry brushing stuff. Um, hi, is it? Okay, I'm going to say your name wrong. I just know it. Elky? Or is it Elk? Oh, I know I mispronounced it, so I apologize for that. Thank you for being here, and thank you for saying that. Okay, um, so I'm going to make like a little... Let me just draw one, because that might be easier. I'm going to make some areas that look like that. But I'm just going to dry brush them. I'm not. I'm not going to um, paint a solid look. They're going to be an illusion because we're dry brushing. So you just want to take your tip. I need a little more moisture, and you're just going to create. Oof, that one's really stark. Just go one way, then go the other. One way, then the other. You just don't want to line them up like soldiers. Okay bury them where they are how big they are just kind of have fun with them this gives you the illusion of some bigger bolder feathers in here and then when we um, put our colors on top i think that makes it look really really good okay i didn't do a whole lot in that section but see when i turn it around the right way how cool that really looks all right so i'm going to add a little more white to my mix and start another layer on here using just the tip of my brush. We're getting brighter now. And I did not wash my brush. I just added white to my brush. So there's still a little bit of that gray in there. I just want some brighter hairs or feathers or whatever you want to call them on here. Here. Once we come in and add our black in here and tone things down, it's really going to make a huge difference. And try not to make your feathers. <laughs> or hairs, whatever you want to call them on your crow, to be so straight. You can give them a little bit of movement, you know, give them some interest. And we're not we're not going everywhere that we went before, but uh, we're going in a lot of places. We need a little bit more in here. Okay, so 
look. Some strokes through here. I'll come back with my black and clean that up. That's very rough right through there, but uh, we'll clean it up. Clean it up with some black. Here. And then I'm going to put a little bit on our little feathers. You don't have to do them all, just give a little pop on some of these. If you can tell where you put them, some of mine I can't tell where I put them, so not a big deal. Do a little bit down here. So we just want to see different values in this. That's that's the key here. Different values of between our light and our little bit darker gray, close to a medium gray, and our black. Um, we just want to see all those differences. Take it a little bit off. bit more through there. I, I do want to go along the edge of my beak again, so if you, um, if you need to get your round brush out to do this, then go ahead. It should be pretty bright around through here. We're looking pretty good with our bright color here. Definitely going to have to bring some black in that area. I'm just checking to see if I want to put, it's going to have some dark patches in it, so we'll be coming back in, creating those layers. So. That one was, that one was not. That was a lot of paint there. I want to keep them thin. I don't want them to be too much. Fill that chest area out a little bit. It's not really the chest, it's kind of under the neck, I guess. Under the neck area. All right, we're looking pretty good. I want to go ahead while I have this brush. I'm, I may have to come back and do it with a brush that doesn't have gray in it. And this area up here is really, really bright above the. Um, Above the eye, so maybe we'll put a little bit of brightness in there. If we get too much, our black will take it down. All right, I'm going to wash this brush because I'm going to want to go into some black in a minute. I'm going to use the same brush for my black. I don't really have to clean the ferrule that brush. I really got a lot of paint up in it. All right, I'm going to make a um, kind of a light gray here. We're going to paint that circle in on the eye. And if you get it too light, don't worry, because you can wash over it with some black. I actually washed over mine with a little bit of black because I thought it was too bright. Um, this photo, this uh, crow was taken from a photograph on Pixabay. So in the packet, I did put the link to the actual photo. I have to come in with some black and thin that a little bit. But we've got the initial shape on there. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to load with black now. Just black. Okay, and we're going to go in here and make sure we don't have too much um, light color in various places. Like we need to 
put a little more black in there. Um, I might need to put a little lighter color up, lighter gray or medium gray up in there. But around the eye is the one place that I want to make sure that it is kind of dark. It doesn't have to, you know, be solidly dark. It's just darker there. Okay, then just a few places. We're just going to stroke in some black because we don't want everything to stay, you know, this light color. we got to have some variance of color in here. I'll be coming back with my dark gray, I think, to touch up some of these places. So down in here, we've got some black going on in here. And then we need to side that little feather thing, whatever it is. Just wherever. I'm going to kind of wipe some of that off. And just to kind of pick up some light, dry brush this a little bit to kind of not make it so hard of a line, which I think I did just the opposite there. So I'll come back with my gray. Let me get a little bit of that gray on here because I took way too much, way too much off here. I do want to make sure I have a little bit, some little. I do say little, but I keep putting down harsh little lines there. Some little bitty, little bitty stuff coming off of here. Do on here. I'll put some black back on the nose, I think. We can see just a, a like a little reflection inside the mouth, but most of it's black. I see I need to bring my black out a little bit there. Okay, grab that gray. Go a little bit to here. Up here on this edge here, we don't want to see, I keep reaching for the wrong remote because I changed my, changed my camera. We don't want to see this, this uh, harsh little edge here, but we also don't want it to be like, to look like we painted it in. So I'm just going to lightly work a little bit to cover that black edge, just a little bit on there. Okay, so this area right here, I'm going to take my round brush so I don't have to wash this brush out. And I'm going to put a little bit of black in here and soften that down a little bit. Not make it quite so stark in there. And then I'll thin a little bit of my black paint. This line where the eye is. We do not want it to be that thick. Um, if you paint it in to begin with that thick, that's fine. But um, I'm going to try and thin it down. My other one, I did the same thing. I got it kind of thick. So I'm just going to go a little bit at a time. And see if I can thin that circle. There we got a nice thin little line in there. So while I have this round brush here, I'm just going to grab a little bit of white on it. And mix it in there and then we're just going to make the eye in here. You can draw a circle, but I'm just going to try and keep a circle within this circle that I drew. And texture it a little bit between that dark gray and some black. Because it needs to look like it's a circle, <laughs> um, like it's the eyeball, you know, kind of out there. But um, I don't. You, I don't want you to work too hard on it. 
it was pretty easy. It just needs some some varying colors in it. That's all it had was some varying colors. So I think I've got mine a little bit bigger than what I want. So I'm going to rinse my brush and get some just some black. And again, go inside here and make that part of the eye that I just painted smaller. Now you can just draw your circle in here. If you have a circle template, that'd be a good way to draw a circle inside here. And then just make sure you paint within that circle there. So now you can see that we got a little bit of a kind of an eye there. I'm going to take some white and make that really light gray mix. And we'll put a little highlight on the eye right there. Wipe your brush off and get just a little bit of just white and add some white on top. The eye is pretty easy. Let me wide angle out so you can see the eye. Oops, that was really wide angling out. So his eye is pretty big, but um, it looks pretty good. I like it. Okay, so I think I need a little bit more black up here on the nose or the beak, the top beak. Just I just want to break this up a little bit and then we can start adding some of our colors in here. You can really play around with this and have a lot of fun with him. He's he's a pretty easy pretty easy little guy to paint. Pretty easy. Oh, I got to take the black out right there. I forgot. I have my chalk line drawn there, but I didn't didn't get my paint out all the way on his mouth there. Oh, let's see. This edge right here. Let me add that highlight real quick, and then we'll start adding our bright colors on here. Um, this edge right here. Is really bright just right there okay so that looks pretty good all right let's add some colors in here so again, you just pick whatever colors you want. Like I said, I have dioxin purple and aquamarine, and you just need a tiny, tiny little bit. I did <laughs> use such a small amount of this paint. I mean, that little dot right there that I just put out is probably enough to do five, five paintings. You don't need much, so. I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes have a hard time getting some of these bottles open. So I have this uh, little bottle opener, which I painted up many, many years ago. It's just a little plastic bottle opener. And I painted it. I used that to open my bottles. I did use some adhesion medium on this before I painted it. And then just painted it up with my acrylic paints. And I think I put like uh, three coats of... Um, gloss on it. It's a certain kind. I don't remember what it was. It was a deco art product, but I don't even know if they still carry it or not. Okay, so to start out with our colors that you want to put on here, put them wherever you want. We're going to do dry brushing again, so your brush is is damp, but any excess paint or water can come out of it. So I'm going to take my purple and add a little tiny bit of white to it just to get it um, more bright so we can see it. Okay, so you just decide where you want to put these colors. So I'm just going to place some in here wherever. There's no right or wrong. Just add it in here. If you get too much, you come back with your black or your light gray and cover it up. Um, it's, your, it's, your, it's your painting, so you just be creative with it, whatever you want. We're going to come in here and do black down in here to uh, 
tone everything down here in a minute. All these really bright layers, we need to have them toned a little bit to wash down into the crow some. Okay, so that's purple. Just put it wherever you want it. We're going to do this twice with these. We're going to put this on first, then we're going to kind of wash over with our wash of black and then come back and brighten these up a little bit. All right, so my aquamarine and white. I'm going to tap some of that off so I'm not leaving tons of paint. And you just put it wherever you want. Make sure I got enough moisture out of my brush because I want it to be more dry brushy. I don't want it to, to be like I'm painting at all. I want it to be more leaving just a little color here, a little color there, and just having some fun with it. Wherever you want to put it makes no difference. I'm going to try and keep it somewhat similar to the one I painted before. It doesn't always work out, but you know, you can never paint the same thing exactly the same twice. So there's that color. I'm going to add a little bit of green now. And you don't have to add any colors if you want. Just wash over it with a little bit of black. And um, you can be done with yours. Take some of that off because I just want to do a dry brushing. I don't want a lot of paint on. And I didn't use very much green, so um, you want to come back in and add a second layer after after we do some dry brushing or put, putting our wash of black on. I don't know if I'll repeat the green. Put some blue on the, the bottom of the mouth down here. Okay, really just wherever you want it. Okay, now this is where you look at it and like, oh my gosh, look at all of those colors. It's way too much. I can't can't handle it. Can't handle it. Well, this is where you get to just take a wash of black. Um, what surface are you painting on? Um, this is a piece of masonite board. So you can paint on any surface that you want, whatever, whatever surface you like or that you have. I say if you've got something on hand, just use that. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and wash some black. This is a very thin layer of black on here. Show you on my palette how washy this is. Of course I'm I'm um on uh glad press and seal so it really beads up on this but it's a it's a pretty thin layer. I'm gonna tap my paper towel so that not a ton comes out at one time because I can do this multiple times on here. I'm not gonna go into that bright area up there uh, I am going to put a little bit on this edge, though. So you just want to tone some of that down. Wherever you think you need it. I put it in many places on here. And then down here, I'm going to use a little bit more black, less water, and really make this a little bit darker down here and up through here. Wipe my brush off, and then just kind of smooth that out. Get a little bit darker color. We want to tone it. We don't want to take all of our hard work that we put in here off, though. Okay. Now, if you want to brighten your colors a little bit more, you can go in and do that. And when I did it the second time, I did not add um, white to it. I just used the straight paint. I needed the white on there at first for just placement. But when we come back the second time, this paint is so pigmented, you don't really need much of it. 
at all. So wash, wash, wash. I'm going to have to put a little bit of white in there, I think. I really like this blue color. This aquamarine is my favorite. So I wanted it a little a few more places. All right, I'm not going to do the green a second time because I think the green was plenty bright enough. But I am going to make a little bit of that light gray and put a few strokes on top. So that our, our bird is not all about the, um, the colors that we just put on it. I just want to put a few so that those colors get kind of pushed back a little bit. They still make our bird look gorgeous, but this is going to settle them down in there and make them look like they're part of the bird, but they're not on top of the bird. You know what I mean? Like they're glowing underneath. Glowing underneath. I'm just kind of dry brushing this, although I think I'm going to have to get a little bit of moisture so I can make some sharper lines on here. Just a few sharper ones that look like they're more on top, okay? Just very lightly. Don't, um, don't get too much, okay? Very light. Put some of these feathers down here and then a little more on them. And I think we're looking good. I think he's pretty done. Need a little bit more. Right through here, some little short strokes right through here. He's just a fast little guy. He's a lot of fun, and you can put so many colors on him. So many colors. So I think I did a little bit more purple on this one than I did on my original one, but he still turned out super cute. Oh, Marianne, you just found me. <laughs> well, I'm glad you found me. This will still be up on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page. So if you didn't get to watch it, then um, it'll be here. It'll be here. But um, you guys, this is a super fast project. I mean, it, it only took us an hour to paint this. And I, I talked a good five minutes before we even started. <laughs> so let's see. Let's compare. So this one looks like I came in and added a little more black into it. So I think I'm going to do that because I like that black a little bit. So let's add some of that black back in this area. Give it more shadow back here. This is, this is such an easy project to play around with and change it up. And it's so easy to, if you get color you don't like it's so easy to come and fix it and you know just oh I need a little more black in there or I don't really like that color there yeah black is your friend on this one and you can really fix it up and change it up and make it make it fun but super easy project to do you guys I hope you've enjoyed this one thank you Anna or Anne, sorry, and Jen, thank you, appreciate it, super easy, you guys, I hope you're going to paint it, you don't have to, this is one you don't have to think a lot about, you just get to play with the paint, and play with your brushes, and just really have fun with it, so I thought it was perfectly relaxing for me to do, I really needed something relaxing after getting everything gathered up and everything for Palooza. I just needed something that was quick and easy and fun and didn't take a lot of time to create. I'm um, just going in here with a little bit of this black and 
few more little shadows here and there. Yeah, I think that's looking good. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. So if you want the line drawing for free, it's just the crow um, has the list of paints that I use, plus the conversion for Americana, the three brushes that I use, the line drawing, and a full color photo. Um, just email me at lanalam at gmail.com and I'll send that to you. My website is not done yet, but it's getting there. It's getting there. I think it's going to be great. I'm very excited to have it done. Um, so yes, Marianne, my YouTube channel, I have over 250 videos on my channel. So there's plenty for you to watch and uh, pretty much everything on there I have a packet for. So uh, there will be a few packets on my new uh, website that I'll probably discontinue, but overall everything's going over. There won't be wood surfaces because we're getting out of that and Pinecraft is going to carry my uh, surfaces for me. And uh, there's many places to get great surfaces. Um, but and I won't have paper packets. It'll be all electronic. If you would like a paper packet, you'll have to email me and then I will um, take care of that for you. But uh, I'll just be selling electronic packets on my new website. So that's going to make it a little bit um, easier. I can honestly say in all the years that I have sold paper packets in a year, I probably only sell about five or six. So um, I'm not going to uh, mess with doing that unless somebody absolutely wants one but there you go guys crow in the moonlight so this one was super fun um the colors are really bright in front of me i don't know how well it translates on the camera for you guys but this this is really a bright project and it was so much fun to do so i hope that you guys have enjoyed painting this one and i hope you paint it i can't wait to see tag me on wherever you post it, um, tag me and I will see it. And uh, I am thankful for those of you that came today because this was spur of the moment. Uh, I just wanted to do it. I was done with all my Palooza packing. It's like, I got to do a live. I got to do a live. I want to do a live so bad. So I wanted to get this done for you before I left for OKC Palooza. So I hope you guys paint it. I really, really do. And thank you so much for being here today. Please check out my YouTube channel and all my videos on it. And uh, my website's coming soon. It'll still be the same name, lanalam.com. And uh, check me out on Facebook. I'm there as well. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much. Everybody.